Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweet and I try in this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you skin retouching from the very start to the very end. So if at all you have issues regarding frequency separation in general, this is a tutorial for you. And before you can proceed, I request that you hit the like button because you're going to be benefiting so much from this very tutorial. So ensure that you hit the like button on this video because when you like the video, it helps you to push and recommend this video to many people out there. And this is the photo that we're going to be using for today's tutorial. And we are using Photoshop, so we are now in the interface of Photoshop. So the very first thing you have to take into consideration is understanding frequency separation. Frequency separation basically is a skin retouching technique that is going to divide the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. In the high frequency layer, usually we have our textures and in the low frequency layer, usually we have our colors or skin tones. So we have to divide the image into those layers so that when you combine both layers you are going to end up with this very image at the end of it all so dividing the layers basically helps us to work on the textures alone and also the colors alone so when we perfect both the colors and the textures we end up with a nicely retouched image after combining both retouched or fine-tuned layers so just going to come and create those two layers by coming right here to the background layer so I'm just going to come to the background layer and simply press Ctrl J or Command J once and Command J the second time in order to create those two layers and to rename, double click right here and you're going to name these two low frequency and you're going to name these two high frequency. Like I said, the high frequency layer contains the textures and the low frequency layer contains the colors. So after doing that, we're just going to come and select the low frequency layer. Now we hide the high frequency layer. And after hiding it, we're just going to simply come to filter and you're going to come to blur and we're going to come to Gaussian blur right here. And after doing this, we have to determine the amount of skin textures that we want to remain with in our final image. So you can see that we have the zoom in and the zoom out handles. So we we'll use this to look for an area that has more or prominent skin textures than the rest of the image. So for my case, it is this area. So you have to move the radius slider up to a point when you just losing out on the skin textures or skin details within the image so just left click and you move it up to when the details in the textures are just starting to disappear or to get lost from the image that is when you have to stop so your image may be having more or even less textures that than mine so my radius may be different from yours so you have to look for your image or you look at the image accordingly and you move the Gaussian blur radius up to the point when you just start to close out on the skin details within the image. I'm just going to take this up. So at round 6, that is when I'm just starting to close out on the details. You can see before and after. So you have to stop at that point. And remember, this is the most important step for your frequency separation details or your final or retouch image. And I'm just going to come and click on OK. So after doing that, the image is going to look a little bit blurry. So in order to get back the textures, we're just going to come to the high frequency layer and now activate it. Then you're going to basically come to image and you're going to come down to apply image. So when you come to apply image, basically, we are going to come to our apply image window. So under this, we have the source, which is the name of the photo. You can see that the name is the same right here. And the layer from which we want to extract our textures or the details is the low frequency layer. So just come. And you select the low frequency layer and make sure the channel is rgb so this is the most important step right now the one i'm going to show you in this first step so if i told you have 8 right here it means your image is going to be 8 bit then if i told you have 16 it means that your image is going to be a 16 bit image so basically what you have to do is to use the right frequency separation apply image step details for the right image so you can't apply 8-bit settings for a 16-bit image and you think or you assume that your results are going to be successful so just come right here and if at all you have 8 right it means the image is going to be 8 so this is for people that have 8-bit images so if at all you have 8 right here the blend mode is going to be subtract and make sure the opacity is 100 percent make sure preserve transparency and mask are not checked the scale is 2 and offset 128 and make sure the invert option is not is not turned on and make sure the preview option is turned on right here it is checked 
So when you do this right, it means that the textures are going to appear on the gray kind of layer. Then if at all you have a 16-bit image, these are settings for people that have a 16-bit image like I do here. So make sure the blend mode is going to be add, opacity at 100%, preserve transparency and mask cannot check, the scale is 2 and offset 0, and make sure this time around you turn on the invert option. And you can see that we have the textures on the gray kind of layer and come and simply click on OK. So after doing this, just come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it all the way down to linear light and you get back the image it was meant to be before. So we want to prove and see if at all we have applied or separated the frequencies of this image. So just going to hold down the control or command key on the keyboard and select both layers and you can drag them into the group folder or you can press control or command G on the keyboard to put these into a group so after putting them into a group we are just going to basically rename this group to frequency separation so we want to see if at all there's a difference between the original image and our frequency separation or frequency separated image so just going to turn this off and you can see it is basically the same image and when you turn this on and off you can see it is not different at all so after doing this i'm just going to come and open up the frequency separation group and after opening it up, you're just going to come and we select. You can see as soon as you put your folders in a group, the blend mode changes to path through. So after doing this, you're just going to come and we start retouching. So in order to retouch the image, you're just going to be using two tools. And one of them is known as the mixer brush tool and the other is known as the lasso tool. So we have to select the layer that contains the colors or the skin tones, which is the low frequency. So to first of all, fine tune those areas so in order to do this quite well just come and make sure you turn off the high frequency layer or texture so that you can only see the colors and after you have done that you're just going to come and simply come under the brushes right click and you select the mixer brush tool so if at all you're having an older version of photoshop you are going to find your mixer brush tool down here so you right click under the brushes and select your mixer brush tool and for older versions of Photoshop, you may find your Mr. Brush tool down here. So you have to set up the Mr. Brush tool so that it can give us the right results as you're trying to blend the image. And in order to do this, you're just going to come and make sure the hardness is at 0%. And make sure clean brush is also selected. Then you're also going to make sure that we select the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke is selected. Because as we're blending the skin color or skin tones, we want the brush to be cleaned automatically because as we are using or blending skin tone the brush is going to be carrying color from one area to another so we just want it to be clean by the time you are trying to mix a different color so the weight is going to be nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent that is what i prefer but if at all you have seen a number of tutorials everyone has their own settings but i have used these settings and i've tried it before and it works best for me so whichever settings that you prefer to use you can use that but i would recommend a weight of nine a load of 75 a mix at 90 and a flow of 100 percent and also make sure sample all layers is not checked because when you click on this option it means that as you're painting on the skin the brush is going to be carrying information from also the textures and painting it in the color layer which you don't want to happen in this image so make sure sample all layers is not checked and right now you're just going to start blending or evening out the skin tones. So as you're using the Mr. Brush tool, you always have to make sure that you don't zoom all the way in because when you do this by pressing Ctrl Command Plus to zoom in and you want to blend the skin tone transitions, you can't see the uneven transitions within the skin. So always make sure you are retouching at a distance and this also helps you to cover a large area within a short period of time, hence saving time retouching. So after doing this, you can reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard. And how to use the mixer brush tool, make sure that, that the caps lock key is not turned on because when you leave it turned on, it is going to show a plus icon. So as I'm doing this or working on the image, you can see that my mixer brush tool is going to be showing or displaying two circles. And that doesn't matter because my screen recorder always has to highlight for me every single area i'm working on so that you can learn and see those adjustments in real time so you can see that i have two circles but 
this is as a, re a result of me using my screen recorder to highlight for you and show you how the Mr. Bright tool is working and how to use it. Make sure you mix colors that are looking alike so that you can blend them and you have even skin tone transitions in those areas. So you can see that I'm moving the Mr. Bright tool the way an area is shaped. You can see I'm moving it in an up down kind of direction because this area is shaped in this kind of format. So when it comes to the cheekbone, I'm moving it in an up down kind of direction. And the reason for doing this is because we want to retain the original shape of the model's face and we don't want to distort or change the facial structure. So you have to keep on reducing on the size. You can see on the nose area, I'm just going to be moving it in an up down kind of direction or movement. So mix colors that are looking alike so that you retain the original shape of the light and also the shape of the model's face. So I'll be forwarding this and I'll see you later on. Hello, welcome back and you can see a quick before and after for just the retouching, just the before and after, before and after. You can see that we have retained the original skin dimensions and also the skin texture has also been retained but we have fine tuned the skin color or we have blended the skin tone transitions within this very image. So anything is going to be using the lasso tool. So after using the Mr. Brush tool, turn on the texture layer by clicking on the eye icon, turn on the textures. And simply come the lasso tool and make sure it is in new selection mode and the feathering of 22 pixels because as we're making the selection on the skin area we want it to be really smooth and have smooth edges so in order to use the lasso tool to fine tune the image you now have to zoom in and you make a selection and that selection is drawn as a result of following the way the shape of the face is so you can see that i've made this shape because the forehead is moving this direction direction so with that done and we are selected on the low frequency layer, simply come to filter, then come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. Remember, we are still on the low frequency layer. So just come, you can see that we have the radius that we initially had for our retouching process. So simply left click on that radius and drag this up, up to the point when you're having a very nice texture for your image. So I'm just going to take this up. So at around 17 or 18, that is when I have a nice skin texture for this image but also the trick you can use the radius you had for your frequency separation just multiply it by 3 so 6 by 3 is 18 I'll just type in 18 and you can see it has the same texture that looks natural so I'll be applying this to the rest of the image so I'm just going to be making shapes you can see I'm following this the way the light is falling on her face right click and come to gush and blur so this is more of a fine tuning step for your image. Right click and come to Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to be doing this for the rest of the areas. And when you feel like the effect is too much, you can right click on the selection and you come to fade Gaussian Blur and reduce on the opacity for that area. I'm just going to leave it at 100% for my case because I want you to see the effect in real time. So I'm just going to zoom out and I'm just going to be doing this. So I usually do this to fine tune the areas I may have missed out when I was using the mixer brush tool to even out or blend the transitions. So when it comes to the nose area, simply make a selection on the dark edges of the nose. Right click and you come to gush and blur. And when it comes to this other side, also do the same for this other side. Don't select the whole nose at, as a whole because when you do that, the nose is going to look flat and you lose out on this nice dimension in the nose area. So I would, up, I would recommend that you only apply it on the edges of the nose area and you don't apply it on the highlight because you are going to lose out on that nice and beautiful highlight on the nose area and it's going to make the nose look flat. So after using the lasso tool, the next thing is going to be cleaning up or removing blemishes from the skin. So how to remove blemishes, remember blemishes are part of textures. So just come to the high frequency or texture layer and get the clone stamp tool. That is what I prefer and recommend. The mode is going to be normal, opacity and the flat 100%. And for the hardness, I prefer 0% because I don't want it to leave 
edges as I'm removing the blemishes. How to use the clone stamp tool? You press down the alternate or option key on the keyboard close to the blemish and simply left click and click over the blemish to eliminate it. So how to remove a blemish? You hold down option or alternate on an area that is close to the blemish and left click to copy that area and release the alternate or option key on the keyboard and left click over the blemish to eliminate or get rid of it. So that is how to remove blemishes using the clone stamp tool. And let me just forward this process because I don't want this to be a long, long tutorial. And now you can see I'm done removing the blemishes from the image. And now the next thing is going to be doing a little bit of eye whitening to this foil model. So in order to do eye whitening, we're just going to come to our hue and saturation and simply come and take out the saturation from the image up to around negative 70 and press Control command i to invert this and get the brush tool right here the normal brush tool and make sure you have black and white right here so make sure you reset by clicking on these two small boxes or you can switch between black and red by using x on the keyboard and after doing that make sure the opacity and the flow is 100 percent and the brush hardness is at zero percent and zoom in to the eyes and you can simply paint in the white area of the eye to whiten it and you have white eyes so just going to be whitening the white area of the eyes and you can see the eyes look natural and they look now better and it also makes the portrait stand out in this case so after you have done your eye whitening the next thing is going to be saving the image so in order to save the image simply come to file export and come to export as so when you come to export as it is going to open up the export as window and with this simply use these settings because oftentimes we usually get photos that change in color or photos that don't look sharp after retouching them so make sure the format is jpeg with the quality at 100 percent make sure the sample is by cubic sharper because we want photoshop to slightly sharpen the image for us after or while we are saving it and make sure the color space is convert srgb and also embed color profile and when your image is done displaying in the preview window right here you can simply click on export and you choose where you want to save your image so this is it for this tutorial and if i told you you have learned something new from this tutorial don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if i told you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel ronix from Mon photography thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing shows and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating